Hello everyone, Colvin here. Today I've been working on something new, a Grixis deck. Now the deck is essentially the Is It Arclight Phoenix deck without Arclight Phoenix and Splashing Black to add a little bit of versatility and get the nice synergy with uh, Bond of Revival and Maw of the Flame. So essentially what we're running is four Terramanders, uh, great early game card that can become, you know, up 5-5. Five, five. We're running four ops just to help dig through our deck. Three Goblin Electromancers. This card is there to help us, you know, with our Charter Chorus, Tormented Voice, making it easier to play them. More importantly, it's there to make Bonner Revival playable turn four. We're running four Charter Chorus and three Tormenting Voice. They are specifically there to ditch cards that we can uh, then bring back with Bonner Revival. And by cards, I mean Maw of the Flame. It can also uh, be used just to dig through the deck, ditch some extra lands, and possibly get to our Enigma Drakes. Since we're splashing black, we're running three Thought Eraser. Um, I've said this before, but Thought Eraser is an amazing card. If you're running blue-black, you should play it. It's just help get rid of your opponent's key pieces. And the Surveil 1 helps us ditch um, a Maw of the Flames and Grave if we want to. Late game, we can even ditch an Enigma Drake so we can then bond a Revival and get him out there with a haste. That could be a big Drake late game. Uh, 2 Tyrant Scorn, just a good early game removal card to help get rid of uh, that early aggression. It's also a pretty good uh, bouncer, you know, being able to return one of our creatures or their creatures, to, you know, one of our creatures to save our creature or one of their creatures just to give us some extra time. You know, we're running only three Enigma Drakes. I chose to run the Enigma Drake over Crackling Drake because since it is Grixis, uh, the double blue, double red is a little hard. This does make it easier since it's only one blue, one red. Only one Beacon Bolt. It's just an extra removal piece that we can either use twice because of jumpstart or we can ditch it into the graveyard when we're uh, charter coursing or something and still be able to use it later. Plus the jumpstart being able to use that to discard like Maw Flames in the grave and then Bonna Revival can be good. For Bonna Revival, I think it can be really good in this deck, especially when you have the Electromancers out. I mean, if you have two Electromancers out, that's a three drop Bonna Revival that can bring anything out with haste i mean you can essentially uh late game play bonner revival for three to bring a terramander back and then pump terramander and hit your opponent for five if you don't have maw in the grave because obviously if maw's in the grave you want to go for a maw we're running four discovery dispersal um discovery obvious with um goblin electro electromancer out we can uh you know one blue one black to surveil two draw card also the Five ability being able to return a high cost non land permanent can really help when our opponents playing planeswalkers or just big creatures we want to put back in their hand. Only two Maw Flame. I'd, I'd have to cut something if I wanted to go up to at least three. I've thought about it because you do want to get uh, Maw of the Flame in your hand as soon as possible or at least in your grave as soon as possible. And having more would help. But we do have a lot of ways to dig through our deck, like the Tormenting Voice, Chart of Course, and the Ops. So we're going to try two for now. Land base, no basics. Uh, we're running four Drowned Catacomb, four Water Grave, four Steam Vents, four Sulphur Falls, four Blood Crypts, and three Dragon Skull Summits. I don't like not running basics, but at the same time, it helps us fix our mana so much. Yes, we're going to be shocking in a good bit. And we have no way to gain our life back. But the deck is kind of a mid-range deck that wants to win quickly. Not as quick as aggro, obviously, but it wants to put the pressure on. And we need to make sure we're getting the right lands at all times. So, so far, no basics in the deck. That'll probably change uh, after rotation once we lose our check lands. And we have to go scry lands in as well. We'll probably want to run some basics to help uh, thin that out the whole tapping lands that's slowing us down for now though i think this mana base is fine no sideboard just yet i'm still experimenting with the deck if it does good i will probably make a sideboard for it so it can do go to best of three but for now we're just going to be doing it in best of one all right so let's head in 
I played around with it a little bit earlier, and it seems to run pretty good. It does seem a little weak against aggro decks. You, you know, we're only running, like, three key removal cards. Two Tyrant Scorns and a Beacon Bolt, so... The constant enemy creatures can be pretty, uh... Dreadful. Speaking of dreadful, this hand. Those check lands are gonna slow us down way too much. I'm gonna mull it. Wow. That's not good either. Yeah, we have to mulligan this as well. We need at least one shock in our hand. That's better. Um, honestly, we're going to throw the steam vents back. No. Well, yeah. I mean, the Enigma Drakes we can get out on turn three, but they're kind of useless. And I'm going to throw one Enigma Drake back. Keeping the Bond of Revival because it is one of our key cards we want to keep in our hand. This isn't a great hand. I, it almost makes me wish I would have kept my first one, even though it was slow. Okay. So, we need to draw more land, obviously, but we need... I would rather draw some draw spells here. <laughs> draw some draw spells, yeah. That's some alliteration for you. Wow. A Banefire for one. Okay, this is good. This gets us a look in our hand. Okay, they are stuck without green here. Honestly... I'm gonna get rid of the Force Landing. It actually hurts our deck pretty much because of all of our key creatures being flying. Keeping the Blood Crypts on top. So we can then play Ignite Drake. They are stuck without green mana right now, so they're they were in a similar situation than us. They have their green now, so they can start going. Uh, I kind of want to slow them down here. I'm gonna Beacon Bolt. Take advantage of their land problem they're having. Plus, putting Beacon Bolt in our graveyard, if we can get something big in our hand, Dreadmaw, we can then discard him. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and chart a course here. And there's Dreadmaw. See, the deck goes through itself really fast with all the draw. So only running two Dreadmaw, it, it could be fine. Especially since all of our creatures in our deck, I don't mind pulling back with Bond of Revival. Okay. We're just gonna Bond of Revival here. There we go. The power of Dreadmaw and Bond of Revival, am I right? <laughs> it's 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 a great win condition, it really is. And I feel like the deck it doesn't rely on the win condition. Oh, I'll do that later. <laughs> it doesn't rely on the win condition. Because it's still an is it Drake deck, essentially. I mean yes, it's not running as many Enigma Drakes as it should, and it's not running any crackling drakes. But, you know, even if we don't get Dreadmaw in our grave, getting an Enigma Drake in our grave can be just as bad for our opponent when we hit Bond of Revival and get it with haste. Terramander late game can do the same as well. So, let's keep going and see how it does. I mean, so far it's been running pretty good. Um, I did a few test games before the video, and I've lost a few. Like I said, it was, it's weak against aggro, but it seems to be able to hold on its own. This is a horrible-ish hand. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I'm gonna keep it because we have Bond Revival and 3 chart of course. Um, wow. I am tempted to maybe cut something and put in a third Dreadmaw. It does feel a little, you know, hard to get him out there. Sometimes, at least. 
but well, know, we'll have to keep playing and see what we might want to cut. Alright, we're just going to do this and go ahead and chart a course. Nothing I really want to get rid of, so we'll just get rid of one of our lands. And we have no removal right now. I'm going to actually opt here. I don't want that. Alright, and then we'll just do this and try to course. Hmm. Once again, I don't think we need the extra land, so we're going to ditch that. We can play our Terramanders next turn and still be able to Discovery or Charter Course. If anything, just to block that Tempest Gen. Thought Eraser. Hmm. So three, six, not, not enough just yet. We're going to play this guy out just to block with, I believe. If he has a counter spell, we'll play the other one. Alright. Um, we're going to go ahead and chart a course here. I'm going to keep the Blood Crypt, I think, and just get rid of one of these. So we could... I, I could block the Tempest Gen with my Terramander, but we could also just take seven here and then pump him. That also works. Unfortunately, all he has to do is play one more land like that to do even more damage. Seven, eight. Yeah. This is a very aggressive deck, and not being able to get Dreadmaw out on the field is really hurting. Um, he's more than likely playing uh, some counter spells. So even having Bond of Revival, even if we can get Dreadmaw on our grave, probably won't be enough. Terramander here, which he has a way to block it. So we've lost, because he could just flash that and tap attack. Yeah. Okay. So, like like I was saying, it's very uh, weak against aggro, not being able to get the uh, Dreadmaw out there quick enough. If I, if I can cut anything to put in the uh, third Dreadmall, it might even be Beacon Bolt. I'm just not sure. I like... I know it's only a one-off, but I like having the Beacon Bolt. This is a fine hand. We still need a way to discard Dreadmall and get one of our Bonner Revivals, which shouldn't be too hard since we have an Op and a Discovery. Okay, I'll just do this, end our turn. I always play Opt on my opponent's end turn, just to make them think I have a shock. It's also good to withhold as much information as possible when playing um, this game. Okay, so no black mana yet. I'm gonna go ahead and Electromancer here. Just because it allows us to play Charter Course and Discovery next turn. Right. We're gonna have to Tyrant Swarm that though. Yeah, let's go. Oh, we, we don't have the Black Mana yet. So let's go ahead and Charter Course. Still no Black Mana. That's not good. Okay. Um.
Honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and just discovery here. I'll draw the Bond of Revival, but we still need to get the black mana. It shouldn't be too difficult. Like I said, we go through our deck pretty fast, so... If we draw black mana next turn, we can play Bonner Revival thanks to our Goblin. Which is super powerful, being able to get Dreadmaw out with haste on turn 4. Okay, so Tamir Elementals. Yeah. That Storm King card. I've been thinking of putting it in the uh, Tamir Elemental deck that I play. Um, he's attacking with Risen Reef here, so I'm definitely going to block. There was no way I wasn't going to block that. Alright, let's go ahead and chart a course. Alright, there's our black mana. We'll get rid of Beacon Bolt. And unfortunately, we can't play Bond just yet, so we're going to Thought Eraser, just to see what else they have. Yeah, I think we get rid of 2-5, we'll be able to play that next turn. I think we get rid of that, just because Dreadmaw can't kill it. And I don't really want that. And then we're going to just pass turn. I don't want my Electromancer to die because I would rather be able to hold up at least two mana next turn. No, one mana next turn when I play Dreadmaw. Just in case I draw another opt. Alright, we should be fine at this point. He can't time twist to save uh, Risen Reef. Honestly, I don't know why he attacked with his Risen Reef. I'm pretty sure that was a misplay. You never attack with Risen Reef when there's a chance to trade because you want to keep that out. No, this is fine. I'll take the four. Alright, and then we'll just opt. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> Good old Risen Reef. Always doing his things. Oh, we don't really need that. Alright. And we'll go ahead and just play this Blood Crypt tapped. So, four to you, three, three... Obviously, he can block my 2-2 with his healer here, but, I mean, that's whatever. Dreadmaw's the real star. Sounds like my cat's lonely. If you hear it meowing, I'm very sorry. <laughs> she doesn't like it when I'm on my computer and not paying attention to her. So, getting these Risen Reefs out doesn't really matter. At this point, yeah, he can keep drawing and maybe draw something to stop Dreadmaw. I don't know why I keep calling him Dreadmaw. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maw of the Flames. It's because his name is Dracuseth Maw of Flames. I guess I'm combining the Dra and the Maw. It's not a Dreadmaw. <laughs> yeah, buddy, you can hit me for three. It's fine. Good game. So he's going for a Teamer Refill to the Dead deck from the looks of it. And there's he has nothing in his hand, so yeah. So yeah, the deck can work really well. I, I love the synergy between Electromancer and Bonner Revival. It gives it the My the early oh, game of Blood for Bones, but the thing about Bonner Revival is it's a haste. See, Blood for Bones and Maul can be good, but you want to get the haste. And I've been experimenting with different ways to get 
Maw out as early as possible with haste. And I, I tried for a little bit. I was a Jund deck um, where I was running the... What's the card? Oh, wait, hold on. I have the uh, pieces of the deck right here, I think. Where is it? Ah, Rhythm of the Wild. I was trying out Rhythm of the Wild because I could go Blood for Bones. And if Rhythm of the Wild is out, Maw can come with a um, with haste. But it, it was just too slow, because you had to get Rhythm of the Wild out on turn 3. I mean, you you have to be able to play a creature turn 1, get Maw in your graveyard turn 2, play Rhythm turn 3, with while keeping your creature on the field so you can go turn 4, Blood for Bones, and play Maw to win. And it just, it, it was too inconsistent having to have so many key pieces, and I feel like this is a lot better, because it's you have less key pieces that you need. But... It can hold its own. You know, the whole point of the deck isn't just to get Maw out. I mean, the deck itself is, like I said, is it uh, Drake's to a degree. This is fine. Uh, we get a turn one opt, turn two thought eraser, and we have two different ways to draw and discard. Well, discard or uh, mill ourselves. We're not on the play here, so that's good. I think my Drake is always a great card to draw. The, the Enigma Drake on its own can help us, like, hold out. If we can get him out with decent cards in our graveyard, we can hold our own against aggro decks. Uh, we're going to keep that. Because Treeping... Tr creeping Trail Blazer... Creeping Trail Blazer... Blazer is not uh, a card we want to be on the field too long. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just Thought Eraser here. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, we're going to get rid of... Well, we were going to get rid of Risen Reef, but I guess we're getting rid of Neoform. I mean, he could use Neoform to sacrifice that to get another Risen Reef anyway. We don't really need the chart, of course. I'm actually going to ditch it. So yeah, this... It's essentially the same as us getting rid of a Risen Reef. Plus, he's not on blue mana right now, so it's not that big of a deal. Alright, we only have... We have three cards in our graveyard, so... We can play Enigma Drake here, I think. Oh, he only needs one more mana, and he can pump these guys, so... He's got it, so we can't block. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, that was a quick game. You see that a lot in Best of One. What do we get? What is that? There is that? no greater treasure than quiet times with friends. What? I didn't know this was a card. Huh. I'm I'm gonna have to play around with him in my uh, Johnny deck. That's um that's pretty good, a Johnny. All right, back to the game. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a this is a uh, video about my Grixis Maw deck, not a video about my Johnny Life game deck. Just I got a guard, and I'm just like, well, I, I do love a Johnny a lot. Um, so I do I do get drawn when uh, I see cards like that. No black mana, but this is fine. We can go turn one Terramander or opt. I think we play the Terramander. Just so we can uh, draw out any removal. Because Terramanders, when they hit the field, they usually get killed instantly. Our opponents don't want them out for long because they know we have a whole bunch of low-cost stuff that we can play to help get him to become a 5-5 five -five as quick as possible. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just chart a course here. That's what we want to see. So we get rid of Maw. Let me just swing in for one more. So at this point, we're just waiting till turn 5. Hopefully we draw a Goblin Electromancer next turn. That would be really nice. So yeah, it's going to deal 3 damage to us right now. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and just opt here. Um, we don't need it. 
We have five mana. Okay. Um, we're just gonna play this tapped. Swing it. Yeah, I could have played another Terramander and blocked a Scorch Spitter, but honestly, we're two turns away from essentially winning. <laughs> I kind of just want to do keep pecking him anyway. And if he plays um, Chandra Spitfire, though, I will be playing my other Terramander. Looks like he's digging for something. There's Torch Courier. You see that a lot in Chandra Spitfire decks. Allowing them to sacrifice it to give their Chandra pace. Because this deck can win, what, turn four? Okay, Beacon Bolt. Uh, I think we just want bodies at this point. We're not gonna attack. I want to trade with whatever he plays. Chandra Spitfire, I would be have to do a triple block to be able to trade with it. Which I can't anymore. But it's fine, because even if they play Chandra Spitfire this turn and use Torch Courier to give it haste, we'll just chump block it, play Bonner Revival, and still chump block it. Bonner Revival, Dreadmaw, win. That's the idea. It's a lot of damage. Come on, let me... We're gonna block Torch Courier here, because we don't want them giving anything haste. Alright, so... Unfortunately, we do have to shock in here. So, they don't need much. I mean, a 1-1 with haste and a shock, or a lightning strike can kill us, so... We either lose or we win, at this point. And we lost, because... Yeah. Good game. All he has to do is zero Chandra, and he deals 4 damage to us. So yeah, see, when it comes to aggro decks, the shocks do slow us down a little bit. And by slow us down, I mean kill ourselves faster. So. It does hurt. Like, if I didn't have the shock in for my fifth mana there, I may have won if he didn't have another way of dealing more damage to me. I hate that we can't go turn one opt here. But I'm going to keep it. So we're just going to go ahead and torment the voice here. So mono red is definitely a bad matchup for us. The cool thing is we do have our Enigma Drake. It does mean he has to use more resources to kill it since it's got four toughness. That was exactly what I would like to draw. Oh! Lava Coil. I was hoping it would take a Shock or a FNAF Firebrand Sacrifice with a Lightning Strike, but... Lava Coil works, too. Scorch Spitter. Okay. Um... Yeah, we'll go ahead and Electromancer here. So we can play Discovery. Tyrant Scorn is good. And I kind of want to draw... I kind of want that. So we have our fifth mana. Even though we have Goblin. Hmm. Plus the fact that I don't have to shock that in. 
It's pretty nice. Yeah, we'll go and just keep it like it is and draw a Tyrant Scorn. And I'm going to shock this in just so I can opt. Because I do want to just get Bond of Revival as quick as possible now that we have Dreadmaw in Grave. Not Dreadmaw. Goodness, I keep saying it. Maw of the Flames. Hi, hi, hi. I'm sorry, guys. I just can't talk sometimes. And it's usually when I'm on video. So you can swing him for two here. I'm assuming he's running um, a similar deck to the last one we faced. Going off here. Alright, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can't play the whole thing just yet. So we'll go ahead and opt. Yeah. So I kind of just want to yeah, dump as many cards in my grave as possible so I can play Terramander next turn and pump him. Alright. So they're running out of resources. There's the Spitfire. We're going to kill that next turn. Thanks to Tyrant Scorn. Alright, so go ahead and Tyrant Scorn this. Wait, what? <sighs> I clicked too fast. Well, that's not good. I clicked too fast, and I accidentally returned it to their hand instead of killing them. Oh, man, that's what I get for my impatience, I guess. They must be able to kill me here. Or, okay, I see what they're doing. So they can deal four damage to our Terramander. Okay, that's good. I can't really do much here. We need to draw Bond of Revival. Big time. Unfortunately, that's not Bond of Revival. We'll take that for a retry. Okay. Played it correctly this time. Um, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 6 damage, so we can't really attack. We have to stay on the defense here with Terramander, which is unfortunate. But we're taking way too much damage. If we do attack. Okay, so they have the shock, I believe. Lava coil. Okay. Alright, so we need We need Bonda Revival here. That's unfortunate. And we're gonna go ahead and just pump this now while they don't have a way to kill it. See, the deck digs really fast. We can't really play that. I actually keep that because I would rather just play him. And so we've seen two lava coils so far. I feel like they wouldn't have a. Th they probably don't have four lava coils. Three, I can see. It's possible that we get Lava Coiled here, but we don't die if they play Lava Coil. Plus, if they already had it, they would have just used Firebrand to kill our Terramander with the Lava Coil. So 
See, that's what I, I like about this version of the Maw deck, is you don't rely on him. Like, right now I have a 5-5 five, five Terramander. <laughs> they got me. We have to block this guy here. So, they have another way of killing me? No? Good game. See, that was super close. Super freaking close. So yeah, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this deck. Um, I really like it. And I plan to try and tweak it some more. Maybe make it a little bit more efficient. Possibly make it ready for best of three. Um, unfortunately, after rotation, we're losing... Uh, I don't... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Opt is going out. Because the other Opt was in... Dem Demaria? Um, we're losing Charter Chorus and Tormenting Voice. Hopefully next set we get some more cards that can be synergized with the Graveyard. Ma, I'm debating on just cutting like maybe one of the discoveries and going a third maw but at the same time I don't know if I want to try and go that hard with trying to just have him be my only win condition maybe even just go up four Enigma Drakes and keep the two maw because the deck can win with just Enigma Drake I mean, the deck can win with just Terramander. Like, every creature in this deck has a purpose, and I like that. There's just no, there's no, like, oh, I have this card in here just to be an early game blocker. No, there's every card in this deck, every creature in this deck, at least, except for our Goblin, can win the game. And the Goblin is there just to help make things faster, go faster. Like, being able to play Bonner Revival turn four, I think, is super awesome. You know, it's Blood for Bones without the Sacrifice and Haste, so... <laughs> Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, please give me a like. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps out a lot. And, well, I hope everyone has a great day. Bye-bye.